This is a scary time. Yeah. Um, there, there have been two times in Wilson Audio history as I was growing up in the business where we really felt like, and there were discussions of next month, are the doors going to close? Right. And so those kind of discussions aren't unfamiliar for me. They're always uncomfortable. Right. The, the few times we've had it. And so when this pandemic hit, I was at Definitive Audio. We were doing a show and it was uh, it was March 2020. And we all know going back and looking at the news feeds and whatnot, Seattle was the place where things were spreading. And and uh, before the show, I, I was calling up Sean and saying, hey, are, are we still on? You know, are we still? Yep. Yep. We're go. We're go. And uh, we get there and um, the old uh, elbow bump, you know, the COVID bump, you know, we started that and and people were being really cautious that that whole time I was there, uh, I didn't eat any food uh, that was prepared by another person. I ate a lot of Pringles and beef jerky during that trip. Right. And I, I was because we didn't know what was going to happen. And from a business perspective, we didn't know what was going to happen. And I was talking to one business professional, business owner in the industry, and immediately they laid off 70% of their sales force. And, and I heard that and I heard the fear in his voice. And the whole situation was causing me to go back and forth. And immediately I, I decided at that moment, I'm not going to be afraid of this. If we're going to go down, we're going to go down swinging, right? And so it's like, let's double down, let's reinvest. So uh, we reinvested in the people here at Wilson Audio, the products here at Wilson Audio and the processes. So what you're seeing around the building and how we've reinvested in expanding the building from 40,000 square feet to 46,000 square feet, we, we did that. We invested in the spaces that our craftspeople work in and, and the spaces that our craftspeople take the breaks in. So they're more comfortable here. We want this to be a place when uh, anyone walks into the building where they feel safe, where they feel appreciated, and where they can produce their best. They can bring their best to the table. Um, and so uh, investments in the CNC machine. Uh, we bought a, a dual table, dual head CNC machine. Whereas before we had a dual table with a single head. And so if that broke down, if something happened to that, you know, the milling was down until that problem was resolved. Um, so that's helped with our efficiencies and being able to fill orders. Uh, recently, we took delivery of our second uh, new uh, ca capacitor winding machine for Relcap. And both of those machines were custom made for us, one in Switzerland and one in the United States. And um, we work directly with both of these manufacturers to develop two unique machines for us to really push the boundaries of what we could do and give us more opportunities and ability to explore uh, capacitor design. So uh, the owner of Reliable Capacitors, Bass Lim, he calls me up, says, hey, I'm getting old, <laughs> looking at retiring. Wilson Audio, you buy the most capacitors from us. And so um, uh, I, you know, I'm gonna sell it. I, I wanna give you the first right of refusal. It doesn't make sense for Wilson Audio to acquire Relcap. Um, if not, you know, I can find another buyer. My dad was alive at the time. And so I spoke with my dad, spoke with my mom. And, and as a team, we were discussing what are the pros and cons? What, ha what happens if Relcap gets bought by a company that doesn't care about quality? What happens if it's bought by uh, a competitor that isn't friendly with Wilson Audio? What happens if it gets bought by a great company and they continue to make great you know, capacitors and then we don't have to make any changes? And how long is that gonna be around? And would it be cool if we could uh, research and develop our own capacitors and really experiment and push the boundaries and have rapid prototyping that capability in-house? So we had those discussions and then uh, we decided to buy the, the company. Unfortunately, my dad passed away before we signed the papers, uh, but he was a part of the de decision-making process before we acquired Relcap. We acquired Relcap, we built out the facility here at Wilson Audio to bring all the equipment back from California. We sent out our tactical team, you know, our guys out there, they learned all the ins and outs on, on how Bass and his team made them, brought that knowledge back, and then we've been able to continue to refine that process. Uh, we hit a ceiling with the machines that they had been using. 
And uh, that's why we decided to uh, buy two new machines. We, we knew that we wanted to do A, B, and C, and these machines were, you know, some of the things they couldn't do and some of the things that was right at the ceiling of their capabilities. And then also uh, the tolerances. Some of the machines were right at the edge of what our tolerances needed to be, but we wanted to push the boundaries of that. So we've, we've reinvested almost a million dollars into getting these two new capacitor winding machines. So in other words, if I understand you correctly, while the machines that you inherited from that purchase was absolutely very, very good for what you were doing before. Yeah. Having decided that you want to get into the capacitor business, quote unquote, in other words, making your own capacitors and, and coming up with your own designs, suddenly these machines just weren't good enough anymore. You needed something even higher in intolerance and and build quality and being yes. able to respond quicker to your your, your thoughts and, and, and needs and wants of, for capacitors. Yeah, yeah. The, these machines were good enough for the time. Mm. But in looking at our 50 year plan, you know, long, long after I'm at this desk and my stewardship here at Wilson Audio is done, we want these machines to continue to be performing and providing the best products available. Um, and then also the, the capacitors we're winding aren't exclusively for Wilson Audio. We make capacitors that only we use. Uh, but there are capacitors that we manufacture for other companies within our industry. And uh, I'll just say that they have been very happy with what we've been able to do. And they were happy when they heard that Bass was going to sell the company, that we stepped up to the plate and we acquired it. We don't, we're not concerned about uh, another company saying, you know what, we're cutting you off, which has happened in the past. And so once bitten twice shy, as they say, right? It happened in the past. And um, that was another scary time for, for Wilson Audio. So. Um, I guess one could say going back to um, being cut off from a key component and forcing us to rapid prototype and to create a solution to replace that caused us to think a certain way. Um, and, uh, and the fear of not being able to get something, that also. And, and also us being the captain of our own ship, us being able to define our destiny I mean, that bringing these capabilities in-house and reinvesting in the, the various departments, this ensures uh, safety with time. Um, and there's, a, there's an element here at Wilson Audio that uh, my father uh, talked about a lot, and it's ingrained in the culture here. It's um, divine kinship. We are more than what we do inside the building here, that uh, each of us has responsibility over our stewardship. And so, so me sitting at this desk or Corbin at his desk or Trent, that we do our best. We, there's an environment where we can bring our best to the table, but we're also securing it and making sure that it's intact and, and healthy for the next person that sits in that stewardship. And we support each other in our family activities outside of Wilson Audio. And if there are health issues and whatnot, there's, there's help with those kinds of things. And we've had situations where, um, you know, pregnancy has been an issue and we've helped, you know, with those processes. So divine kinship is so far beyond just the whole business model. It's, it's recognizing us for who we are from a humanitarian perspective, really. It's the, that our, our human nature is, is beyond our stewardship here at Wilson Audio. What's so special and what's so important to the end result and philosophy of Wilson Audio speakers? Yeah, I, I think the best answer to that is what's so special about materials? Mm. What's so special about resistors? Mm. What's so special about wires? What's so special about spikes you put on the bottom of speakers, right? Um, it's really under the umbrella of refining every element. Every component matters. I always think of it as uh, a symphony orchestra, right? And you've got all the different sections. You've got the violins, you've got the timpani player, the, the cellos and bass and horns and whatnot. Um, when each one of those is performing at their highest potential, the net result as us as listeners in the audience is spectacular. When one of them isn't performing well, sometimes you hear that. When four of them, five of them aren't performing well, timing's a little bit off. Um, and so if we want to make a better product, 
it's not reinventing the wheel. It's, it's polishing the wheel, right? So in our room number one that you saw, uh, that's our near field listening room. So uh, all the elements that are the individual components in a loudspeaker, that's where we do near field testing. Uh, the differences between solders, the differences between binding posts, and then the same binding posts machined exactly the same with di different metals, uh, different drivers, and then you change a component or you change the rear, rear wave chamber on the tweeter, what does that do to it? Uh, different materials, enclosures made exactly the same, and then you change the material, and you make sure all the elements are the same, but the material's different. And you can hear those differences. All those things matter. And even if, you, so you're looking at the, the symphony orchestra, you're looking at the individual players, if you can get an improvement of 1% here and a half a percent there and 3% here and you know 4% here, all those add up to something really substantial. And um, so Sasha V being the latest example, uh, you know, just, just putting a tweeter in it, that's, that's one, a company could say, hey, that's an improvement. That is a new version. I don't know if that's a big enough improvement to justify a person spending their hard earned money to go out and upgrade and then go through, you know, the, the whole exchange process of certified authentic and trade-ins or selling privately. So I always look top to bottom on every speaker that we develop. What have we developed over the last five to seven years that'll benefit this product? So Sasha V, the tweeter, uh, how we um, how we machine the inside of the enclosures for diffusion of the mid range, the rear wave of the mid range, um, the the binding posts, the cables, the the V material on top of the woofer, the capacitors inside the crossover, the acoustic diodes on the bottom. I mean, you go top to bottom, and it's like you know, there's a point, there's a point, there's a point. There's 30 things. There there are over 30 things in the Alexia V. There are up to 30 things in the the Sasha V that are different than the DA. W. That's substantial. And, and, and a person said, well, that, that one thing, how big a difference does that one thing make? Everything, if it's giving a half a percent or a percent more improvement, the fact that there are so many, and I dedicate myself to making sure that there are a lot, there is a substantial improvement from series to series. Um, Vern went through his presentation was that um, uh, he showed how by uh, you guys have a jig, mm -hmm. but he was just holding it up. So he had a, a bunch of these um, samples, Birch, yeah. uh, MDF, and all these different materials yeah. all cut to the same size. And he would hold it right in the corner and he had this little hammer with an accelerometer attached to the end. And by tapping it, you could hear the resonant frequency of that material, but also how long that resonance would uh, decay, how long it would take to, to, to disappear. And so he tried it with a bunch of different materials and at the same time, simultaneously, he showed on the screen the, uh, um, um, the computer uh, um, uh, results, if you will, yeah, of, yeah. That, uh, of that tapping. And then uh, he got to aluminum and of course aluminum being a metallic uh, material, rings like crazy it could be argued it's monotonic but it just goes on and it takes a long time to yeah. decay and unbound versus bound it's going to behave differently right. so there are going to be arguments both of ways course. but still you know exploring what are the differences and even if it is bound is there a material that when bound is better better exactly. in specific applications because yeah. like i've said before there is no one material that you can use in every area. You think about a speaker. Yeah. So the interface from the bottom of the enclosure to the floor, the enclosure for the woofer, and the woofer's moving a lot. The interface of the tweeter, the tweeter's not moving a lot, mm -hmm. right? And then how, uh, how to manage vibration through the whole enclosure. Uh, there are so many different places and all the bracing and everything and the port. So there's so many different places that you can use material that there is not, we've found that there is not one material that is best in all locations, that is really application specific. And that's what this, uh, this research has done, materials research, and, and what we've done over decades of really diving into the characteristics, the sonic characteristics of, of materials.
So Daryl's going to show us what um, the, the, the the experiment that Vern showed us uh, earlier in the day yesterday. Uh, so he's going to take something to use as a hammer, so to speak, and then the actual samples of the material they use for testing of resonances and monotonicity. So this will be really easy to hear uh, online on your computer or your phone, uh, unlike when people have a system and they swap out a cable and they expect you to hear it on your phone. This is going to be much easier to hear. So I'm just going to use this ball bearing right here to hit against the material. This is uh, Baltic birch. That's, that's the signature of Baltic birch. And then this right here is uh, HD or MDF. And then this is aluminum. Ooh. Sorry. No. <laughs> I'm trying to hit it all the same. So I have to hit this one a little bit lighter. Here is S material, higher frequency. One good thing about using S material in mid ranges here at Wilson Audio is the res resonant signature of this material is above the mid range area. And it's monophonic. And then this is X material, higher frequency. So you'd use that actually because it's a higher uh, frequency, you'd actually be able to use that for the bass. That's exactly, yeah, yeah. Our, our woofer enclosures. Yeah. And then, <gasps> there you go. There's our, S, our, our V material. Yeah. So this absorbs and um, uh, converts vibration to, uh, to heat and dissipates energy more effectively than any material we've ever experienced. And yet, at the same time, it's rigid enough that you can still machine it. You can yes. cut it into different sizes, and so yes. it'll it'll hold its shape. Yes. Final question: Wilson is fast approaching its fiftieth anniversary. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been fifty years. It's insane. Um, uh, any quick thoughts about reflection, looking back, and or mm -hmm. uh, products that? you can talk about that that um, you might release to commemorate this special time hmm. it's a lot 50 years um this may be more personal than what you're asking but when i think about what does 50 years mean um going back to uh, being a kid and boxing up records with my mom mm. and my siblings mm. and uh, working in the garage in California uh, and then when we moved from the garage to 100 Rush Landing sweeping the parking lot store and a little bit of money to go you know buy some pizza and some gummy bears and play video games and whatnot seeing the company and our capabilities back then and then fast forwarding to now it's incredible what we're able to manufacture and what we're able to do now. And it's incredible to see the team of people we have now. Uh, there, there have been people in the past that were associated with Wilson Audio. Um, back in California, there was one person that stole a lot of money from, from us, um, mm. was part of the bookkeeping and really financially hurt us. Uh, there have been other people that have done things uh, over the years that have almost bankrupted you know wilson audio so the type of the caliber of people that we have now it is absolutely world class and it's been a sifting process for 50 years and when you have uh, roughly 60 employees 60 people that dedicate their time and their lives to making the best and the average tenure is over 12 years you're doing something right you know the the environment is is it's a great environment for people to bring uh, their best to the table. And, and there's, there's a, a friendly competitiveness here at Wilson Audio. And it's fun to see people that compete with themselves to do their best. Um, so looking at 50 years, it's amazing to see the types of, of products that we're able to make now versus back when we were in a garage. Uh, the people that are building these products and the families that are being supported by the purchase of every single one of these products. Uh, it's, it's a really special thing to be a part of. 
Anyway, congratulations to you. I look forward to whatever's in store for the 50th anniversary. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. And uh, everyone, thanks for watching. You are, um, you've persevered uh, watching this interview with Daryl, uh, uh, head of uh, Wilson Audio, and me, of course, uh, Adrian from Audio Excellence. We'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.